Hi, I am Dr. Asmatullah, third year postgraduate trainee at Khyber Teaching Hospital, Peshawar. Today, we will discuss anatomy of the optic nerve in detail. We will learn general structure of the optic nerve, its anatomical subdivision, its blood supply, and its clinical significance. Optic nerve is basically a second cranial nerve which started from the optic disc from here optic chiasma. It contains afferent nerve fibers which are very sensitive to light. We will discuss the afferent fibers now. Optic nerve contains 1.2 million nerve fibers and each of the nerve fibers originate from the retinal ganglion cells. Most of these fibers synapses in the lateral geniculate body but although 10% of the nerve fibers go to the pretected nucleus of the midbrain. The 90% go to the lateral geniculate body and from there go to the cerebral cortex while the remaining 10% go to the midbrain. Nearly one third of these fibers subserve central 5 degree of the visual field. Within the optic nerve itself, nerve fibers are divided into 600 bundles by small fiber septa which are derived from the pyometer. This is a histological cross section of the optic nerve. This is dura mater which is a very tough layer. This all is dura mater. The innermost layer is pia mater which is adherent to the optic nerve. This is the structure of optic nerve. You can see the small septas in the optic nerve which are basically of pia mater and each subdivided the optic nerve into smaller bundles of the nerve fibers. These small bundles can be seen. In between the pia mater and the dura mater which is the outer one this one is the arachnoid mater. So these three layers are wrapped all around the optic nerve. This is another diagram. I will show this uh, with the different colors. Let me choose the blue. This is the optic nerve, the yellow lines. These are the nerve fibers of the optic nerve. This is basically a cross section of optic nerve. Okay. Now we will draw the dura mater which is the outermost layer this one this is the dura mater okay you can see over here we will draw the arachnoid mater with the red one This is arachnoid matter after dura and we will use a blue for the pi matter. The innermost layer the innermost layer is pi matter. Okay. So these are the different layers. Just remember that the three meningeal layers the meninges wrapped all around the optic nerve so the innermost is the pia mater the outermost layers which is the most outermost is the dura mater and the cent the in between the pi and the dura is arachnoid mater so always remember this this radiological view of the optic nerve 
this is the optic chiasma over here so this hole is the optic nerve and this hole is the optic nerve you can see how it look like in the G scan or MRI so these are the different parts of the optic nerve it is divided into anatomical subdivisions the inner most which is one millimeter is the intra or intra ocular part this one now it comes to the this part which is the intraorbital then the in the optic canal this is the intracanalicular and then the the remaining is the intracranial part so we will discuss it in detail the first one intraocular uh, segment of the optic nerve this is a uh, one mm long one millimeter approximately 1.5 millimeter vertical diameter and this is unmyelinated part the part of the optic nerve which is intraocular is unmyelinated this is very important and after muscopically visible portion is called the optic disc and it tell us the mysteries in the brain if we see some findings in the optic disc so it can tell us about the different diseases which are uh, happening in the brain uh, this is a fundus photograph this is the optic disc this is the optic disc and it also give us a physiological blind spot so this is the optic disc the second and the third part of the optic nerve which include the intraorbital segment this is about 25 to 30 millimeter long and it extends from the globe to the optic foramen at the orbital apex it started from here up to the if we take it as the optic canal so it and this is I so it starts from the here from here up to here this is about 25 to 30 millimeter each diameter is 3 to 4 mm because of the addition of the myelin sheet to the nerve fibers as we discussed earlier the intraocular part is unmyelinated while the intraorbital part is myelinated and it is increases its diameter at the orbital apex the nerve is surrounded by tough fibrous annulus of zin and we all know that the four recti muscles which are superior rectus inferior rectus medial and lateral recti originated from the annulus of zin and this is a thick fibrous tissue and it make a circle all around the optic, na optic canal the intracanalicular part which is in the optic canal measures about 6 millimeter the length of the optic canal is about 6 millimeter and it is fixed to the canal since dura fuses with the periosteum in the canal if we take it this as a optic canal so the optic nerve fuses and these are the optic nerve fibers and if we take the dura matter as black so it fuses over here with the optic of the bone of the optic canal So this is an important thing to remember. Now the fourth segment is intra uh, intracranial segment joins the optic chiasma and varies in length from 5 to 16 millimeter. The length of the optic nerve over here is 5 to 16 millimeter. 
and this spot is vulnerable to the damage by the aneurysms and tumors like pituitary adenoma and others different types of tumors this is a very nice um, cut section of the optic nerve from the side of the face this is roof of the orbit and this is floor of the orbit okay we are looking at the optic nerve from side this is roof and this is floor of the orbit the eyeball is the superior rectus this is the inferior rectus this is the optic nerve and different parts are marked the smaller one which is number one which is right as number one is the intra ocular part which is one millimeter then the second one from here to here intra orbital part then the third one intra canalicular part which is present in the optic canal and the fourth one is intracranial part the so different parts are shown you can see here now the blood supply of optic nerve optic nerve is basically supplied by ophthalmic artery which is at its wrap around the optic nerve from inferior to superior it supply the optic nerve uh, and uh, the pile blood vessels these smaller blood vessels these are basically pile blood vessel these small you can see and these are the branches of the internal carotid artery we also supply the optic nerve the ophthalmic artery give branch which is called a central retinal artery and enter into the optic nerve and it passes in the middle of the optic nerve and all the nerve fibers wrapped around it these are the different fibers of the optic nerve and the all wrapped around it this is clinically also important and this is the area of posterior ischemic optic neuropathy this area while this area this is the area of interior ischemic optic neuropathy so this is clinically very important to remember so in short optic nerve is supplied by the ophthalmic and internal carotid artery ophthalmic artery give branch as, as a central retinal artery which supply the optic nerve and which gives other branches like posterior sharp posterior ciliary arteries and and interior ciliary artery supply the muscle whenever there is a disease of the optic nerve we will see the following signs and symptoms reduced visual acuity the visual acuity of patient will be reduced the second is relative afferent pupillary defect or RAPD will be present. Third is discrematopsia or color vision impairment and in optic nerve disease red and green colors are affected mostly. The fourth one is visual field defects. Whenever there is damage to the nerve fibers there will be a field defect. Diminished light sensitivity but the light sensitivity will be decreased. And the sixth one is diminished contrast sensitivity. We check 
uh, the contract sensitivity with the Pelly Robson chart. This is another equity chart. The equity of patient with the optic nerve disease will be diminished. This is Ishihara chart by which we can check the uh, red and green color blindness. Or we also check uh, the function of the optic nerve. If a patient is unable to read a single plate, so there is a problem in the optic nerve. This is Perry Robson chart by which we check the contrast sensitivity. Thank you very much for listening. May it help.